Hello guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of a medieval Slavic woman from Bohemia, actually an early, early medieval period Slavic woman from the 6th to 7th century CE. This is her predicted phenotype, this is what she is predicted to look like. She is predicted to have hazel color eyes, Greek shaped nose, which is like a big long aquiline nose, and blonde color hair. Wysek does not give her a prediction for eye color because she wasn't genotyped for the main variant in BH2 that Wysek needs to determine eye color. Wysek is not capable of imputing uh, any kind of genotype, so Wysek is not able to give her an eye color prediction. With Snipper Free, she is predicted to have green or hazel eyes, blonde hair and intermediate skin, kind of the same as what you see with um, the same as what you see with my toe, but also I depicted her with kind of wavy or curly hair here because she's predicted to have wavy hair with hair ID. She's got this genotype in the pro frenetine pro variation of DRD2, which means no European no-go learner mutation, uh, higher risk of schizophrenia. She's got warrior with the IE, which is met met genotype in uh, Komtsval met variation, which means uh, slower dopamine reuptake, more dopamine building up in her system. Very typical genotype for Europeans. She's also got lower odds of cannabis-induced psychosis genotype in ACT1, so um, she can smoke weed and without any like bad consequences and she does not have the sociopath gene, no derived OXTR. Despite being a modern European, she does not have the lactose persistence mutation that's typical for modern Europeans, very interesting stuff. Uh, she also does not have the European mutation that protects against myopia. Uh, once again, kind of surprising, most Europeans do have this mutation. And um, when it comes to polygenic traits, she's got a high risk score for Crohn's disease, a high risk score for coronary heart disease, a above average risk score for type 2 diabetes, um, a high risk score for Parkinson's disease, um, a high risk score for brain aneurysm, uh, she's got a uh, average risk score for schizophrenia, and she's got a very high risk score for stroke, and um, she's got a below average risk score for type 1 diabetes, and an average risk score for bipolar disorder. This is what she scores with Eurogenes K13, and although she lived in Czechia, she's actually not very similar to modern Czechs. She got way too much Baltic, way too much West Asian components. Czechs tend to have less. She's closest to Ukrainians from Lvov, basically West Ukrainians are the closest population to her, and she's getting modeled as a mixture of West Ukrainian plus very, um, various um, Northwest European ethnicities, although with G25 it's different. With G25 you see she's getting modeled as a mixture of some kind of Slavic plus... Um, Spanish, for example, or Germany, so I guess it's more of the same. This is what she scores with MZLPK11 Modern. She is scoring actually quite a lot of Caucasus related admixture, 24% Caucasus um, ancestry. Interesting stuff. Less than me, but still kind of high for a Central European. She is closest to Bell Beakers from Czech Republic, and she's actually uh, very similar to these Bell Beakers. So, what we can draw, the conclusion we can make here is that between the Bronze Age and the Middle Ages, there wasn't much difference. There wasn't much population change in uh, the Czech Republic. It was just kind of bell beakers, and then they just kind of morphed into Slavs. And uh, what I'm saying here, I know it's going to be taken with some controversy because people online seem to think, a lot of people online think that Slavic people are just kind of corded wear, which is not the case. Slavic people are about as much bell beaker as we are corded wear. Like if you talk about early Slavs, it's pretty much an even split between bell beaker and corded wear. And bell beak and corded wear in this region, Central European corded wear, is not the same as corded wear in like the Baltic region, right, or battle axe, it's different, different stuff. So this is what she scores with ancient Eurasia K6, 35% Natufian, high amount of Natufian, very southern results, and here she actually is closest to the Czechs, followed by Hungarians. Uh, she's getting modeled as a mixture of Lithuanian plus Jew from Yemen, or Norwegian plus Libyan, so yeah, relative to the Northern Europeans, she's got some shift towards the Middle East. And uh, this is what she scores with Gedrosia K3. She's scoring 95.6% West Eurasian. So overwhelmingly Caucasoid, overwhelmingly European drift. She's a modern individual, right? She's not a she's not a bronze age individual. She's not even a iron age individual. She's, she's literally a medieval modern individual. So it's not so surprising that she's got all this modern European uh, drift. Uh, thanks for watching my video. You can download the sample in 23andMe format from Lick, which is in the description. And uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy what I do here on YouTube.